Hello everyone. Today I want to talk about the the authorization token that you need to generate when you are uh, interacting with Jira using a REST API. Now I have been talking about REST API quite a lot, and uh, recently Atlassian um, made some changes about uh, not recently, but I think it was uh, maybe last year, some sometime last year, where Atlassian stopped supporting the authentication using username and password on cloud so basically if you have to interact with jira programmatically you have to you have to generate a token now i'll i'll i'll, I'll try to explain how it works now what you need to do is you need to go to id.atlassian.com so just type in id.atlassian.com and uh, it will take you to a page where you will see all the all the applications that you have access to and uh, you basically need to go to one uh, uh, so basically you need to go to your account settings so let me show you very quickly uh, yep so you need to go to your account settings and when you go to account settings it will open uh, another page for you and then uh, it will of course look something like this then you need to then you need to go to security and uh, you can of course change your password manage your uh, two-factor authentication blah 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 but main thing is uh, we need to configure this uh, api token so if you click on it it will then give you the option to configure this uh, token of course you need to create a new token or uh, i mean when you create a new token you can of course copy it and then uh, save it somewhere and once you do that uh, do one thing Open uh, if you have Linux or or maybe Mac OS or if you're on Windows I guess you can uh, install curl I guess by using PowerShell I'm not really sure how it works for Windows I think uh, you have curl I'll probably check I, th I think it has been a while but I think using PowerShell you can still make a you, you can use curl if I'm not wrong so basically just uh, use this uh, I mean I'm just following the documentation just to validate whether your token was was or it is working or not so you use this command curl hyphen v then of course your cloud url your jira cloud url then hyphen hyphen user then use your email address so i'm sure uh, you have an email address and then use the token that you generated right now uh, in this command so when you when you don't use any codes uh, just paste the token and test if it works so basically what you can do you can either use uh, maybe one of the endpoints like maybe something like uh, this um, rest api3 slash issue slash st1 whatever and uh, it will then uh, uh, it will then of course uh, uh, maybe fetch the issue details so if you get a json response then it means that it works and, and your token is working now the way to use it in your code is basically using a, uh, encoding so you need to encoded using base64 and you will find plenty of examples online and uh, when you are uh, I mean if you're using uh, let us say Postman or Talent API I don't really use Postman I think I should because Postman is probably much more advanced than uh, than Talent API but Talent API is simple and it works for me I mean I, I don't really uh, care too much about the tool I'm using I want things to get done so if you're using Talent if you enter your username, uh, not username, but your if, if you enter your email address and the token that you generated, it will actually convert. So basically, the combination of your username and your token, and when you base when you encode it using base64, you will get one string, encoded string. Use that one in your code or in in your uh, talent API. Uh, and if you're using, let us say, Groovy, you have methods for doing it. I'm sure you have similar methods in other programming languages let me just go do a quick search um, so rest I, I'm doing it for the very first time rest API base uh, 64 encode username password something like this I mean just search for it and I'm sure you will find uh, plenty of examples online and uh, let us let us take a look at this link maybe maybe this one as well so basically you have to use your email address along with your token to base to basically encode this and then use it in your uh, in your uh, 
code and uh, I, I don't think this page has much information let us take a look at this one okay this page is basically showing you uh, what you need to do using some tool I guess I don't know what tool they're talking about but let me just also type in here groovy I'm sure I have an example um, I don't re really remember if I covered this okay so groovy scripts and base 64 let us open a couple of these uh, links and uh, let us verify so basically the combination of your username colon your token and when you base when you encode it using base 64 then you will get something uh, which you need to use in your uh, in your uh, code when you're making a rest call I think yeah I think this is it so this will probably work something like this so like this should be it, it is in PHP but it is it is same thing I mean uh, I'm just trying to share what you need to do um, and uh, when you do that of course uh, use that token in your uh, I mean not the token but the encoded string that you get when you're making a rest call but if you're using, as I mentioned before, if you're using Postman or if you're using Talent API Tester, you just enter the token as it is along with your email address and it will do this encoding, base64 encoding for you, which you can use, uh, which the tool will use to make a rest call. And I'm, I'm making this video because one of my video on Jira REST API, in fact, the whole series of REST API and along with uh, one specific video, uh, has got maximum views on my channel because people want to do these things using REST API and that is why I made uh, videos on uh, REST API on my channel in fact I have a lot of them just talking about REST API like wonderful things you can do with with, 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 with Jira Cloud REST, REST API and if, if, you, if you're new to, to my channel just go to my website revisaga.in and uh, go to mastering Jira REST API so what I normally do I organize all my videos on the, on the website so you will find plenty of information here I guess I'm sure I have talked about it maybe not it's a bit okay how to authenticate so I have talked about these things in the past in the past so see this is the example I'm talking about so go ahead and try and uh, I'm of course repeating myself today but I wanted to talk about this you know one thing which I'm which I'm sharing today which I don't remember sharing before is uh, the encoding part when you're using uh, let us say a groovy script you have to base 60 you have to encode it using base 64 so just search for base 64 if you want to know about it and uh, base 64 is uh, is in programming base 64 is a group of binary to text encoding schemes blah 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 I'm not really going to talk about the algorithm because I don't know the algorithm I remember learning these things when I was in college uh, we had one one chapter not chapter we have one complete subject on cryptography uh, and that was a while back I think more than 20 years ago so but cryptography is not really not really a new thing anyways so we'll, we'll probably uh, talk about it again if I have anything new to share on this REST API thing but I was looking for so I have already talked about a lot of things that you can do with REST API and the last set of videos I made on REST API talked about uh, talked about uh, the ability to talked about some endpoints that you can use to talk to Jira software for getting the sprint information but if you have any if you have any suggestions if you want to if you have if you want me to cover something that you are struggling to cover let me know I might know the answer or I'll probably try to find the answer for you and of course I'll also learn along with you and I, I, I'm now focusing a bit more on REST API these days and recently like a few months last past few months because uh, because things are moving towards Jira Cloud and even if you have to develop an app using Cloud for example uh, uh, using Forge Forge then uh, you need to use the REST API so I started looking I started exploring Forge API uh, recently I started re-looking at Forge API recently because now I am serious about doing something with, uh, with, the, with the Forge uh, platform 
and I'm also learning Node.js. So everything in, if you're doing these things, you have to basically understand how REST API works and uh, you, you need to get familiar with the different uh, endpoints. Uh, one thing that I have been talking about and I'll probably talk about it again is uh, maintain a list of all the common endpoints like somewhere in Postman or maybe your local, maybe somewhere in, in your code repository, like different endpoints that you can quickly access. For example, if I'm making a REST call and I'm doing it using Groovy or JavaScript in Node.js, I need to know the body that I need to pass. For example, even to add a simple co comment, uh, you need to pass in few things. And uh, when you know what you need to pass, you can actually focus on the coding part rather than uh, trying to understand uh, the JSON response. So when, I, when I'm building something, like if I'm developing something or writing a piece of code, I prefer focusing on the thing that matters. For, for example, if you're doing something with the REST API using, uh, uh, using the Jira Cloud REST API, and when you're writing a code for it, I think you should focus on the business business logic of the code rather than uh, understanding the correct endpoints and uh, how to pass the JSON. Uh, you should do those things in Postman or maybe a tool like Talent API. So it will really help you, I think so. Because that is what I do and it worked for me. And that is all I wanted to talk about today. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and you learned something new today. Thank you very much.